lovely direct pass. Timo Werner, great goal. Lovely to watch on the right hand side. It's a bit set into Patrick Sheik. Oh, great. Nice little from Timo Werner. It's a bit set again, causing trouble. Tyler Adams. Hello and welcome back to RDF's How Do You Play Like series with FM Scout. In the comments, leave a recommendation of which tactic you would like to see next. Please like, subscribe and comment if you haven't done so already. Julian Nagelsmann shocked the world becoming a football manager at the age of just 28. When Nagelsmann took over Hoffenheim, they were placed 17th in the table, seven points from safety. He then guided them out of the relegation zone, sitting one point above it at the end of the season, winning 17 games from the 14 that were remaining. But the good form didn't just stop there. He then finished fourth with Hoffenheim, making him the first manager of Hoffenheim to reach the Champions League. On June the 21st, 2019, his reputation grew even further, becoming the manager of RB Leipzig. His footballing philosophy impressed fans from all over the world. His high press, quick tempo, very direct, counter-attacking, took over the Bundesliga and it was a success for him and his teams. Julian Nagelsmann had many different systems and he'll be able to switch between systems depending on his opposition. Today I will be focusing on two formations, it will be the 4-4-2 and it will be the 5-3-2. In order to test both of these during one save, I will be using the 4-4-2 at home and the 5-3-2 away. The way I have set this up is the 4-4-2 will be more controlling and the 5-3-2 will be focusing heavily on counter-attacking. Both systems in possession are actually quite similar because in both systems we will be forming a box and the way the box will be formed in the 4-4-2 is these two wide players here, the wide playmaker and the inverted winger will both come inside in the midfield and it will form a box between these two and the two strikers with the two DMs as a double pivot. In the 5-3-2, the box is already formed but to keep things dynamic and creative, I have used two Mazalas who will often go out wide, who will go forward, move into channels and roam from position. Out of possession, when the opposition has the ball, we aim to defend narrow. We want the opposition to get the ball out wide and we will position ourselves to cut off passing lanes so they cannot play the ball inside. If they do play the ball inside and we manage to get the ball in possession, we will now counter. And we will be really working hard with extremely urgent intensity pressing and the counter press. Both systems rely on the two strikers to be the match winners. Though, both wide men and the two centre mids here, alongside the fullbacks, will be influential throughout the season. The instructions in the 4-4-2 is set up with the high press. We've got the much higher defence line and the higher line of engagement and your strikers will press further up the field close to goal. You will be using the offside trap of course because the defence line is much higher. The defensive width is on narrow so we can stay close as a unit and we can move side to side making it difficult for the opposition to come inside the field. We'll be using tight marking to close down any space, extremely urgent pressing intensity. We've got no prevent short goalkeeper distribution because on Football Manager, both your strikers think it's a smart idea to close one goalkeeper down. And on tackling, we've got no get stuck in. Julian Nagelsmann did not like giving away cheap free kicks and cheap fouls. For that reason, we are going to leave the tackling and not get stuck in. In transition when possession has been lost we're going to counter press, work hard to get the ball back and when possession has been won we are going to counter to get our players in attacking positions as soon as possible. When the goalkeeper has the ball he's going to distribute it to the defence so we can really focus on our vertical passes and keeping the ball narrow. In possession of course I've gone for attacking width very narrow. The trick is both fullbacks will be out wide to be the free option to stretch the opponent defensive positioning. In approach play we're going to focus through the middle 
middle and underlap. This is good for the vertical football, keeping the football very narrow between the central players. And we're going to play out the fence. While we're playing out the defence, one of the centre-backs will have the option to play the more direct passes to the forward players. Passing directness, I'm going to leave it on standard, but with a higher tempo to move about in a more urgent fashion. In the final third, in the dribbling with the creative freedom, I have left blank. Creative freedom, you can be more expressive if your team aren't creating enough. Dribbling, you can use run at defence if you want to be even more direct. For the 5-3-2, it's very similar. The away tactic, we notch down the defence line a little lower to minimise the risk of the opponent kicking the ball over our defence line. Otherwise, out of possession is the same. In transition, again, it's the same, but we are not going to counter press. And the reason for this, I wanted to keep a little defence shape and I didn't want my players to immediately close down. But with extremely urgent closing down, it is very still much the high press. In possession, we have gone with the standard width because the mentality is on attacking. I know a lot of you might be thinking, because I'm using this away tactic to be more cautious, surely the mentality should be lower than the home one. But no, the mentality is just increasing the risk, the tempo, the passing directness. I think the attacking mentality is perfect for this system to counter-attack. So when we do win the ball, everything happens in a more urgent fashion. And because this is a more countered approach, we are going to use the pass into space. The reason why I'm not focusing down the middle or underlapping is because most of my players are positioned centrally already. I didn't think I need to focus through the middle because if I use this, this will also increase the mentality of my central players. For the away tactic, I am using work ball into box to keep possession a little better in the final third and we are going to dribble, run out the defence to be more direct with the ball. Okay, let's talk about some player roles. So for the 4-4-2, we're just going to be using a normal sweeper keeper. Nothing fancy, but we're just using the sweeper keeper because we've got a very high line. On the left side, we've got the wing back attack. The more offensive wing back out of the two. He's mainly there to give us width in attack and also an option for us to play the ball out wide when the middle is getting too crowded. We've gone for two centre-backs, one on the centre-back role and one with the ball playing defending role. He'll be the one looking to play the direct ball even more. He's also got dribble more as a PI. He'll be looking to bring the ball out from defence with his feet. The right fullback is a little bit more cautious than the left, but he'll still be taking some risks, crossing from the byline and getting further forward again to help with the width and stretch the opposition. For the double pivot, I've gone with two DMs who take more risk, getting the ball forward to the creative players and shoot less often on both DMs. For the left side of midfield, we've gone for the wide playmaker who, who will often come inside. I've chosen the wide playmaker on this side because I feel we needed a creative outlet when we're playing from the back and we're keeping possession in the middle. Come inside with the ball often sitting narrow to form that box shape. The inverted winger too will be sitting narrow to create this shape. He'll be shooting less often because he's a more direct player so he'll be dribbling a lot and passing shorter again because he's a more direct player. We've gone for two pressing forwards up top one with the attack, one with the support. The one with the support will be looking to drop deep, hold up the ball. Being the link up guy, you will notice some nice link up play with the pressing forward on support and the pressing forward attack. Of course, this is the role for Timo Werner moving into channels, closing down the opposition. For the 5 3 2, I've gone for the sweeper keeper again on support. That must be an accident. Really doesn't, it really didn't matter. I didn't notice any difference between the two goalkeepers. The roles in defense, of course, are a little different because now there's three of them. So for the two wider center backs, we've gone with the center back on defend duty just normal defense keeping in line with each other with a ball playing defender in the center acting a little like a libero but not the exact same of course he'll be covering dropping deep and when he has the ball he'll be dribbling more again to bring the ball out from the fence he will also be looking to play that counter attacking ball or the more attacking ball to the advanced players the two wide men we've gone for wing back support both of them crossing from the byline to give the low cross out wide also again like in a 4-4-2 to help stretch the opposition defense with a dm i've just gone with a defensive midfielder on support who will be taking more risks will be acting a little like a playmaker our team will not be focusing passing to him most of the time if i use a deep line playmaker my team will automatically be looking for the playmaker in center mid i've gone for the two mazalas the very energetic people very dynamic they will be roaming from position, moving into channels, staying wider, getting forward, making it impossible for the opposition to keep track. And for the two strikers, again, I've gone for the pressing forward on support and the pressing forward on attack.
Now we're going to look at some results and look at RP Leipzig. We won the league 80 points from 34 games. Top goal scorer Timo Werner with 39 highest average rate. And Timo Werner again 7.65. Most assists Hausenberg with 15. Best pass completion Tyler Adams. Not the goalkeeper this time. Most player of the match awards Yusuf Poulsen. Most yellow cards Lukas Klosterman with 18 which is pretty high. Most red cards, Yusuf Poulsen. And that is because, if I click on his profile, he's got 18 aggression and playing as a pressing forward. Well, he's going to tackle hard. So let's go to the league table. 34 games, we won 24, we drew 8, we lost 2, we scored 84, which is the most in the league, and we conceded 27, with 80 points on the table, 11 ahead of Bayern Munich. The two games we lost, there were away matches, the games that we drew, all of them were away apart from one at home. So, our home record, if we check. Play 17, won 16, drawn 1, lost none. Wow, impressive. Our away record, still the best in the league, but we won 8 equal with Bayern. We drew 7 and lost 2. For the detailed average possession, we're 15th, but Nagelsmann never relies on possession stats. It's quick, effective football, the high press, direct. And that's exactly what we did. We scored the most goals, got the best crossing completion, best crosses completed with 321. Goals from corners, we scored six. Goals from direct free kicks, we scored two. In direct free kicks, we scored nine. The best pass completion were 12, but again, not important. But look at this, chances created. 126 shots on target ratio with 54 percent which is good shots on target though we had 320 the most in the league the best conversion rate in the league the most dribbles in the league goals conceded were third so that's pretty good defensively goals from corners we conceded five we can do better if we look at the player dl's the most game one is our players pretty much eight of the top eight players are ours <laughs> let's go to the attacking top goal scorer team of verna Average minutes per goal, Timo Werner and then Yusuf Poulsen. That is very good. The most shots in the league, Yusuf Poulsen. Shots on target, Timo Werner with 80. Shots on target percent, Timo Werner with 6. Conversion rate, Patrick Sheik with the best conversion rate, but he didn't play that many. Timo Werner plays 7th though with 20%, which is good. One more thing I wanted to show you guys, the defendant, is the fouls made. We are 14th. We are not high. Though we're high pressing, we are not tackling hard. We're not getting stuck in. We're not giving away stupid fouls. And that is exactly what we want. With the tackles one ratio as well, we're fifth with 88%. That is very good. If we look at our schedule, look at the results. It started off very well. At the start of the season, we got a 3-0 win at Union Berlin. Eichert Frankfurt, we got a 2-1 win at home. Borussia Mönchengladbach and Gladbach 3 2 away, which I was I was pleased with because they are a good team. By Munich 4 3 at home. Again, I was happy, good team, but we were conceding a lot here. In the Champions League, we lost to Freiburg and then went on another very good run. Scoring five and two games running. Scoring four. So very high scoring game. There was very high scoring games in this league. And if we look here in the Champions League, we've done very well in the Champions League. In the knockout stages, we got Chelsea and we knocked them out, beating them both rounds. Same for Benfica in the quarterfinals. We got a 2-2 draw at home, which I felt we should have won, but it was going to be very difficult without the main man, Timo Werner. Pretty much dominated that game, but the away game, they dominated. The German Cup 2, we won the German Cup, winning in the final 4-1. Pretty much dominated against Hanover. I'm, I'm sure, yeah, Hanover in the league below, that's what I thought. So let's check. Oh wow, in the first round they won 16 0. Crazy. But they beat Wolfsburg and they beat Borussia Munch and Gladbach. But then I was just too strong for them in the final. So we won the German double. We've done very well in the Champions League, getting to the semi finals. Good against the strong teams as well. So Bayern Munich, we beat them 3 0 at home. Bayern Leverkusen, we beat them 3 1 in the, in the German Cup and we beat them at home. If we check our squad stats, you see Timo Werner with 39 and 37. Yusef Poulsen, 23 and 41, which is very good. It's a bit soft, 13 goals in 30 games, very good. This is the team that I was selecting for the home games, the 4-4-2. There's the goalkeeper, I'm not even going to try and pronounce his name. Halsenberg at left back, Willy Auburn, Upan Campo as the centre back, Klosterman at right back, Haidara and Adams as the two holding, Forsberg as the wide playmaker, Sabitza as the inverted winger, then Timo Werner and Paulsen up front. For the 5-3-2, we've got the goalkeeper again this time, 
Konate in the centre back Lima this time as the holding midfielder. Haidara pushed up to Mazala and I'm playing Danny Omo as the Mazala. I don't have any training schedules this time. I don't know much about his training methods. I couldn't give you guys much information on that. But I've gone with the same method the RDF training guide goes by. So with the rest 59% there's no gym work. 60 to 69 there's no pitch or gym work. 70 to 79% half intensity. Same for 80 to 89 but on 90% condition we've gone with double. There's some plays that I've done some focuses on. For example this guy he was 15 at the beginning so he couldn't play many games at the start. He didn't even play a game with the whole season but he was training with the first team. If we look at his progression, look at that. Very good. Positioning has gone up by four. Decision has gone up by two. I put him on defensive positioning. I put him on defensive positioning. His marking has gone up as well. That is very good progression for a guy that didn't really play. Or he didn't play at all, I should say. There's Tom Krause as well. On his training, I put him as defensive positioning. And look at that. Look at that increase. His physicals has gone up. His mentals has gone up. His technicals have gone up. But bear in mind, guys, the assistant done the training i didn't do the training the assistant did it there's also christopher in cuckoo in cuckoo is i don't know how to say his name attacking movement i put him on attacking movement look at his training rating very high progression if i got all time look his anticipation has gone up by two his off the ball's gone up by two very good increase he's a very good player now if i was playing second season he would definitely be a starter and that's it guys I hope you've enjoyed another episode of RDS How to Play Like. Don't forget, if you've got any recommendations, any tactics you would like to see recreated with success, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. I'll see you next time. Peace.